everyone. We're pleased to be back. And here is ASEAN News. President of Indonesia promises to rebuild the city after hit by earthquake. The Indonesian president, Joko Widodo, says the government will rebuild homes and buildings ravaged by a powerful earthquake. Joko Widodo visits the worst hit areas as the death toll reached 90 and thousands more people were displaced and promises collapsed houses will be rebuilt and there will be help for those people in need in the earthquake that struck Sulawesi Island last week. Earlier, I tell the governor that the government will rebuild after damaged by earthquake. Setelah diaudit, nanti segera pemerintah pusat akan uh, bangun kembali. The 6.2 magnitude earthquake causes significant damage to hundreds of homes, a mall, hospitals, hotels, and government buildings early and has been followed by more than 39 aftershocks. The government will give as much as 50 million rupees or $3,558 for the rebuilding of heavily damaged houses, while houses with medium and minor damages will give in up to 25 million rupees and 10 million rupees, respectively. Pemerintah akan membantu untuk yang rusak berat. The government will provide help for those who are heavily damaged with as much as 50 million rupiah. We hope that with the help of the central government, the recovery of collapsed houses, economic recovery, recovery of service processes in government, and the bureaucracy will also return to normal. A military official who is part of the country's official search and rescue joint forces says the nearly 10,000 people have been evacuated from Mamuju and the nearby city, Majene. The official says many of them have fled to Parepare, a neighboring city more than 250 kilometers south of Mamuju and nearly 150 kilometers from Majene. Straddling the Pacific Ring of Fire, Indonesia is regularly hit by earthquakes. In 2018, a 7.5 magnitude quake and subsequent tsunami struck Palu in Sulawesi, killing thousands. The country's meteorology agency warns of more aftershocks and the risk of extreme weather in the coming weeks. The Indonesian SAR team stops the search for plane crash victims but continues to search for Sriwijaya Air's cockpit voice recorder. Indonesian authorities says the search for victims of a plane crash that killed all 62 people on board halted, but the hunt will continue for the Sriwijaya Air Jet cockpit voice recorder. The operation has come to an end now, but we as the National Transportation Safety Committee still have to search for the CVR cockpit voice recorder that is still yet to be found. CVR yang sampai hari ini belum ditemukan. Indonesian Search and Rescue Agency Chief Bagus Puruhito tells reporters that the rescue team had collected more than 324 bags of body parts and plane wreckage. The search operations for victims of the Sriwijaya Air SJ182 plane crash have come to an end now, but we will carry out further operations by actively or maintaining on-site monitoring and supervision. Flight SJ-182 crashed into the Java Sea on January 9, four minutes after takeoff from Jakarta. Divers retrieved from the seabed the other so-called black box, the flight data recorder of the 26-year-old Boeing Co-737-500 jet. The Sriwijaya crash was the biggest airline disaster in Indonesia since October 2018, when 189 people were killed on board on a Lion Air Boeing 737 MAX that also plunged into the Java Sea soon after takeoff. The London Criminal Court sentences four men who involved in the deaths of Vietnamese migrants. At London Old Bailey Criminal Court, judge gives long jail sentences to four men who involved in the people smuggling gang where they are convicted after they had admitted or been found guilty of manslaughter and immigration offenses. Four men are given lengthy jail terms for the manslaughter of 39 Vietnamese men, women and children who suffocated to death in a stifling, airtight shipping container in 2019 as they tried to make their way to Britain. The leader of the conspiracy, Ronan Hughes, was jailed for 20 years, while another major figure, George Nika, was sentenced to 27 years. 
Maurice Robinson, as the driver of the truck the bodies were found, was jailed for 13 years, while Eamon Harrison, who drove the container to the Belgian port at Zeebrugge, from where the victims were taken to Britain, was given an 18-year sentence. Detective Chief Inspector Daniel Stoughton said outside the court, the criminals in this case are very dangerous. The criminals in this case made their money from misery. They knew what they were doing was dangerous, but they did it anyway. They treated the victims as a commodity and they transported them in ways that we would not transport animals. I hope that the exposure of this case sends a strong message to those, those involved in this type of crime and that message is that we will find you, we will stop you and you will face justice. The discovery of so many dead people, some as young as 15 in the back of the truck on an industrial state to the east of London shocked Britain and Vietnam and shone a spotlight on the illicit global trade that sends the poor of Asia, Africa and Middle East on perilous journeys to the west. As oxygen levels fell, some tried desperately to escape but in vain, others used mobile phones to say their last farewell to devastate relatives on the other side of the world. China says United States helping southern China with ships and planes is not good for peace. Chinese Foreign Ministry at the news conference says the United States often sent ships and aircraft into the South China Sea to flex its muscles and this is not good for peace, after a United States aircraft carrier group sailed into the disputed waterway. The US frequently sends its warship and aircraft to the South China Sea to flex its muscles, which is not good for the peace and stability of the region. The United States carrier group, led by the USS Theodore Roosevelt, accompanied by three warships, entered the waterway to promote freedom of the seas. The United States military says just days after Joe Biden became United States President. The strategic South China Sea, through which trillions of dollars in trade flows each year, has long been a focus on contention between Beijing and Washington, with China particularly angered by United States military activity there. China repeatedly complained about United States Navy ships getting close to islands it occupies in the South China Sea, where Vietnam, Malaysia and the Philippines, Brunei and Taiwan all have competing claims. One restaurant in a Bangkok hospital in Thailand serves marijuana dishes to customers. A Thailand restaurant in hospital east of Bangkok is dishing up cannabis-infused dishes to try to destigmatize its usage. Its leaf pretty much tasteless, but I think that it was quite strange. I've never taken cannabis before. It feels weird, but it's delicious. The Chopia Bai Buberch Hospital in Pranchiburi began serving the dishes in the beginning of January, becoming a popular dining spot for local visits. It's not very different to vegetables. It's like fried leaves. I think it's an alternative food. My review on the effects after eating is that it makes my throat dry and I crave sweets. Last month, the Southeast Asian country delisted cannabis from the narcotics category, allowing those authorized by the government to cultivate the plant. The government approves Chao Pia Ababuera Hospital, is known as the pioneer in Thailand for studying the usage of marijuana and considered an expert in the use of herb medicines. Project leader and researcher Pakakrong Kwangkao says attempts to promote cannabis use through traditional campaign in newspapers, but when the hospital began serving cannabis infused dishes, that caught people's attention. The Thailand government is hoping to expand on the initiative by teaching other entrepreneurs and restaurants how to safely cook with the cannabis and eventually draw in foreign tourists. We plan to add more cannabis to Thai dishes that are already well known, such as green curry soup, to boost the popularity of these dishes even more. With these fusion dishes for foreigners, we can pave the way for Thai cannabis to draw in the world community.
Vietnam Communist Party hold Congress to elect new leader. Vietnam's ruling Communist Party gathered for its first National Congress since 2016 with a mission to select new leaders and shape policy for the next five years and beyond. The event, the 13th Congress since the Communist Party of Vietnam was established in 1930, brought nearly 1,600 delegates from across the country to Hanoi. Although the coronavirus pandemic has been largely been brought under control in Vietnam, disinfection measures for vehicles entering the Congress venue were still taken. Delegates to the Congress, foreign dignitaries, sports staff and media attending the event were all tested twice for the coronavirus in the days leading up to the gathering. According to the Health Ministry, a total of 10,000 people have been tested in conjunction with the Congress. Over nine days of meetings, mostly behind closed doors, delegates will pick a new leadership team aiming to bolster Vietnam's ongoing economic success and the legitimacy of the party's rule. Party Congresses take place once every five years. The country has seen its economy outstrip much of Asia, keeping the coronavirus pandemic at bay thanks to stringent quarantine measures, testing and tracing. So far, Vietnam's reports 1,500 COVID-19 infections and 35 deaths in total, far fewer than most other countries. Sao Paulo looked to set up local production of China's coronavac vaccine that developed by Sinovac Biotech. China is expected to send raw materials to Brazil for the local production of its coronavac vaccine. Regarding the authorization to export raw materials for the vaccines, we all know that this is a technical and other political issues. Vaccines are means to control the pandemic and guarantee the health of people. It's not a political instrument against COVID-19. Director of Brazilian Biomedical Center Butantan, Dimoskova, says they expect supplies from around 8.5 million doses of China's coronavac vaccine made by Sinovac Biotech to arrive by February. Dimoskova says about 5,400 liters of active ingredients will be sent to Brazil and he hopes the initial shipment enough to fill and finish some 8.5 million doses. In this moment, nós já... We notify that freeing up to these supplies will be done quickly, starting with the 5,400 liters. It announces that this will arrive in the coming week on February 3rd. He also says Butantan plans to have factory fully producing the Chinese vaccine by early next year. India sends free shipments of COVID-19 vaccines to Nepal and Myanmar. A plane carrying the first shipment of Indian manufactured COVID-19 vaccines arrives in Nepal capital of Kathmandu and followed to schedule with sends to Myanmar and other country. They say that every ending has a beginning. I think this beginning, this beginning of joint cooperation between India and Nepal marks probably, hopefully, the end of the COVID pandemic, at least in Nepal. Nepal official says the medical staff and frontline workers will be given first priority for inoculations. According to the official data, Nepal reports 268,310 cases and 1,975 deaths from COVID-19. Indian Foreign Ministry says supplies under grant assistance will be shipped to Maldives, Bangladesh, Nepal, Myanmar and Seychelles, while Sri Lanka, Afghanistan and Mauritius await regulatory clearances to receive the vaccines. According to the statistic data that Myanmar report, 138,368 with deaths 3,082 and 122,781 has recovered from hospital. Local governments in some areas may implement additional controls in addition to the nationwide measures. Myanmar government bans gathering remain limited to less than 30 people nationwide, except for public servants, government-related meetings, food establishments and essential businesses, among others. Chinese president stresses role of multilateralism in face of global challenges. According to the commentary published by China Media Group, Chinese President Xi Jinping's remarks at the World Economic Forum virtual event of the Davos Agenda have presented the world with a Chinese plan, the role of multilateralism in the face of global challenges. 
The problems that facing by the world are integrated and complex. The way out of them is through upholding multilateralism and building a new community and building a new community with a shared future for mankind. Xi's speech talk about charters, a direction for global governance against the backdrop of the global battle to combat the pandemic and the era of the economic recovery and post-pandemic times that are destined to follow. The world must step up macroeconomic policy coordination, abandon ideological prejudice, close the divide between developed and the developing countries, and jointly tackle global challenges. President Xi noted clearly in his speech that multilateralism should not be used as a pretext for acts of unilateralism and selective multilateralism should not be our option. The country has also vowed to continue to advance science, technology and innovation and promote new type of international relations. The measures announced by the President Xi have made the international community fully aware of the resolution and efforts of a major country with its mindset on safeguarding multilateralism. Gianni Rosso, head of the School of Economic and Business Science at the University of the Witwatersrand in South Africa, says that China has been making great strides in promoting global cooperation and he believes the country will continue to make more in the future. South Korean president says South Korea may secure additional COVID-19 vaccines from the Vavax. President Moon Jae-in says South Korea may secure additional coronavirus vaccines for 20 million people from United States drug maker Novavax during his visit to SK Bioscience work site. According to the company's statement, Novavax entered into a development and supply agreement for its vaccine with South Korea's SK Bioscience. Moon adds that the agreement between Novavax and SK Bioscience raised the possibility of securing vaccines for an additional 20 million people. That is addition to the vaccines that South Korea government has secured so far. Korea Disease Control and Prevention Agency Director Jeong Eun Kyon says earlier this month, the country secures 106 million doses to allow for coverage of 56 million people, more than 52 million residents of the country. Thank you for watching, and please remember we are still in the pandemic era. Stay safe, stay healthy by washing your hands, maintain social distancing rule, and use your mask. See you.